Good day everybody and uh, we are back again together and looking, continuing uh, on that uh, DBE 2021 paper, the one that was written in uh, May, June for the senior certificate or national senior certificate exam. All right, so uh, we've looked at the other questions uh, from question one until five. We are now continuing with question six. All right, so uh, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you become part of the family. And uh, for those of you who might need assistance uh, for whatever reason in mathematics or physical science, uh, please just uh, come into contact with us. And uh, in this case, we are found at the following email address, info at mlungisinkosi. .co.za. All right, now we're looking at the Doppler effect, that is question six. Okay, and by the way, you can easily download this paper from um, any of the platforms, uh, particularly the Department of uh, Basic Education. You can find this question paper there. All right, now um, the question is on the Doppler effect. It says a learner in a car moving at a constant speed of 10 meters per second along a straight horizontal road records the frequency of a sound emitted by a, a distant stationary source. Okay, they say the learner then repeats the recording uh, of the frequency of the sound when the car travels at a constant uh, speed of 20 meters per second. All right, so um, uh, quickly just to have a look at this. So you're looking at now, um, as you would know, if we have a detected frequency, when you look at this graph, it's actually showing you the detected frequency or the frequency that is recorded in this case as the car uh, moves, uh, um, you know, um, from the source, you know. Uh, and in this case, look at this when the car is moving at uh, uh, 10 meters per second, there's the frequency that's recorded. Okay. So in this case, what this tells us is that you can note that the frequency that is detected initially, uh, you know, when the car was moving at uh, 10 meters per second, was actually less than the frequency of, of the source. Uh, when you look at the car moving at zero meters per second, that means if when it was stationary actually, right, the detected frequency was 700 hertz. So that means that should be actually the frequency of the source, okay? Because remember, if the source and the listener are both stationary, it means that both the frequency of the uh, the detected frequency and the source uh, should be actually the same, right? But the moment the car started moving, then we see that that frequency drops, and that should tell us that uh, in this case, uh, the the car should be moving away. All right. So uh, they say uh, state the Doppler effect. Okay. Uh, of course, you should know that by now. Okay, uh, that's the, you know, the phenomenon of uh, uh, where the detected frequency uh, changes, uh, um, you know, relative to the so um, the medium of sound propagation. Whew, I'm not even saying that right. Okay, yeah, but uh, it so it goes. All right, they say use the graph to answer the following question. All right, so first of all, they say write down the frequency of the sound emitted by the stationary source, okay? So as we did say there, uh, for that answer in 6.2.1, uh, so in this case, we did say that if the, the car, when the car was stationary, we detected a frequency of 700 hertz, so that would mean that that would be the frequency of the stationary source, right? So it means in this case that frequency should be 700 hertz. Okay, so uh, uh, they say give a reason for the answer. Um, and we did state it uh, earlier on that, you know, the frequency of the uh, uh, sound, okay, um, or rather the frequency of the listener should be equal to the frequency of the source. Uh, when both of them are actually stationary. So in that case, there would not be a relative, uh, um, you know, velocity between the sound, uh, uh, between the source rather and the listener. So in that case, uh, that would be zero, um, rather that would be 700 and therefore they would be equal. Okay, right. Uh, for 6.2.2, they say in which direction is the car moving relative to the source? Okay. Uh, choose um, uh, towards or away. 
So definitely it would be moving away. And again, they say, um, you know, uh, give a reason for the answer. And in that case, remember that the frequency, as the car moves, we can see that the frequency that is detected is less than the frequency that is actually emitted. Okay. So in that case, that tells us that they are moving away from each other. Okay. Perhaps let's write that down. Okay. So we said for 6.2.2, 6 .2, we know that it is moving away. Okay. And our reason uh, is that the detected frequency, the frequency of the listener, is less than the frequency of the source, the, uh, the, the, yeah, the frequency that is emitted by the source. So as a result, we know that it must be moving away. And then uh, the very last one, I'm sure you should be able to score yourself some really, really great and remarkable marks here. Okay, so they said, uh, calculate the speed of sound in air. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just choose values from the graph to try and answer this question. So first of all, so we know that uh, the Doppler effect equation, ooh uh, I keep writing uh, the wrong stuff here. So that's plus minus Vs times Fs. Right, now we know uh, in this case, right, we already have the detected frequency which you know let's let's use the 10 meters per second um, uh, you know speed okay easily we could have used this one not, uh, not a problem with that but i'm just going to choose the 10 meters per second so the detected frequency is 679.1 okay 679.1 uh, uh, okay we don't know what the speed of sound is right and note this time the listener is the one that is moving. So I'm going to say the velocity of the listener. Note, I'm not going to put in the signs there just yet. And then um, we know that the source was stationary. So that means Vs is zero. So I'm going to just keep V there. Okay. And what was the frequency of the source? That was 700. Remember, it's that uh, value that we got from the graph there, which is 700, right? Now, uh, what we want to do, we said if you wanted to know whether this will be a, um, a proper and improper fraction, what we just need to do is just check uh, the result. If we wanted the result to be less, it means this fraction here has to be a proper fraction, right? So it means that the, the, the numerator must be less than the denominator right or you can say the denominator must be greater than the numerator so how do we make this guy less okay so in this case it means that we're going to put a, a minus sign there i hope you can uh, understand if you don't understand what i'm talking about here please just go to uh, uh you know our video our full video on the doppler effect and i mean i explain it quite nicely there so that you can be able to follow on right so wanted to find out what the speed of the source is uh, sorry the speed of sound rather uh, so that's going to be v minus the speed of the listener i said i'm going to take that value of 10 divided by v okay now um maybe let's divide both sides by 700 you know uh, so that we can have um, so this is 679.1 uh, divided by 700 okay so remember if I divide by 700 on this side okay so it gets rid of that guy those two cancel out now we're left with that okay so all that's left is just a little bit of mathematical gymnastics okay uh, let's cross multiply um, I'm not sure if you would want to solve it this way uh, in this case, you can actually, uh, let me see if um, that would give me a fraction that, uh, you know, is easier to work with. Um, so if I take 679, oops, sorry about that again. So that's 679. Uh, so 679.1 divided by 700. Uh, okay. I get 0 0.97 uh, so I'd rather work with that uh, I know it's not really healthy to 
uh, to round off at this stage. Uh, so I'll multiply that by V, so I get a 0 0.9. Um, if I cross multiply, multiply it by V, so that would be 0 0.97 V, which would be equals to V minus 10. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. So if I take that to the other side, let's say, um, obviously that means this would be negative. So that's, okay, so minus 1 V, this will give us, minus 0 0.02 or minus 0 0.03 V, which is equal to minus 10. So you can divide both sides there. Uh, so I'm going to say um, 10 divided by my answer. Okay, I get a value of V is 334.93, 334.93. Uh, if you wanted to, you can obviously uh, just round that off to uh, 335. Okay, so that's our final answer. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Um, yeah, we're a bit sloppy in answering this one, but nonetheless, it is what it is. Okay, easily you could have used the 20 meters per second value, that would mean that you now needed to take the 358.2, um, uh, you know, value for uh, for the frequency, okay? And in that case, uh, I'm sure, I'm quite certain that you would still get to the same answer. All right, and that would be the end of the Doppler effect question. I hope that you were able to follow on and understand, and we'll continue with the rest of the other questions uh, during the course of this week, uh, just helping you prepare with uh, that final exam. And uh, by the way, for those of you who have not yet subscribed, please just continue to be part of this uh, family. Uh, and, you know, we're almost at that 20,000 mark. So please, guys, just subscribe, 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 and tell your friends and your family and all those who are looking to do well in physical science in metric. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.